turning a Warhammer 40k kit from my backlog into a Genshin Impact inspired gift. Now shame on you if you're a subscriber and you don't know what Warhammer 40k is, but it's my favorite franchise in our miniature and scale model painting hobby. It's basically a tabletop miniature war game with a building, painting, and collecting mechanic built into it, otherwise known as the hobby. Genshin Impact, on the other hand, is a free-to-play RPG game that you can actually cross-play between mobile and other platforms such as PC. It has an online co-op system, but it's most notoriously known for its gacha mechanic. To my understanding and to my experience, it's basically spending limited resources within the game to get loot boxes that serve as raffle entries or chances for you to get either a rare super character slash item or like cheap stuff you don't really need for the game. So I'm merging these two worlds by using up my weekend and taking up a kit from my backlog and painting that with a paint scheme inspired by one of the characters in Genshin Impact. And I chose Genshin Impact because the kit that I have in my backlog is a gift that I got from my girlfriend who loves Genshin Impact. And I asked her how she wanted me to paint this kit and she said to paint it and make it look like Noel, one of the first three characters that you get in the game. It's her first favorite character as well. But if you look at Noel as a character, she already has that Sister of Battle look, which the kit that I'm using comes from. And the interesting thing about Noelle is why she is some sort of battle shield maiden. She is part of the Geo element, so we have to also incorporate that Geo-ness, or that, at least that big hefty sword, into this Warhammer kit. Now Tariana, on the other hand, is a character, surprisingly, who I don't know much about being the 40k nerd that I think I am. But I do know that she does have an amazing cover art. Already as it is, I think the model in the pose is very Noelle from Genshin Impact. And when we look at the paint scheme and we look at Noelle, what I'm considering now is the fabric is two-tone. The inner fabric is more red while the outer is black. And it's had like a little white lining. We can have the armor, though it is metallic, it's bit bright and white so I will have to consider that with the gold trim and then I want the hair to be a bit different from the light armor so I want to enunciate that purple hue on the well onto the model so let's get started with the conversion and really it's all a matter of finding the right sword and I look through my old bits box and I look through a Stormcast Eternal set from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. There is an issue because I'm looking at this hand or this piece right here. It's a perfect sword, looks really Genshin Impact like and massive. But there's an issue with how the hand is too close to the hilt. And that hand is not exactly a convincing hand from the current model, so I'll have to cut that out. And if I cut that hand out, I'm actually snipping a portion of the hilt. So what I'll do is I'll just go to this other sword, which I'm a little bit iffy about, but it's got a clearer hilt, so I can cut that clean off. And the way how I want to rectify using the hand is I want to just get bits of hilts from other swords and connect them together and just build an individual whole sword together because I want to retain the original hand current model kit. It just makes it more convincing like that. Now, it's not exactly the best craftsmanship and I will admit in retrospect, I might have overextended the sword hilt <laughs> and it looks more massive than it actually is in the game, but you know, then it's done, we're working on weekend time. This is what we have to work with. Noelle also has a little headdress, and while Tariana Palos doesn't, I just took some off from a Stormcast Eternal head, and I just glued that together. So how I'm connecting these bits is I'm just actually just using Tamiya liquid cement, and then I'm uh, putting in a lot of it, a, a thick amount of it actually, just to hide the seams. You may have heard of the tip of putting bits of plastic 
into your Tamiya cement because Tamiya cement melts plastic. So if you have melted plastic into your glue, that glue becomes like just melted up plastic that you could use to connect bigger bits and just pseudo mold them and hide the seams. This undercoat is deliberately a lot brighter because we want a very, very bright model. Since I am working on a, a tight schedule on the week and I did the obvious thing, which is basically to work on different parts. As some parts are drying, I base coat the other parts. As other base coats are drying, I'm washing the other base coats that I've previously done. And this is just a basic base coat, wash, and highlight. And the color scheme, if you are curious on how you want to do this, maybe you have a Sisters of Battle Army, or maybe you're painting in the well figurine and you want that paint, paint scheme. The paint scheme is down below in the captions if you want to check it out. And give me a like while you're down there too, it helps the video. There, there are a few details that they snuck in the paint job to make it look really Genshin Impact. If you are a Genshin fan, I tried to replicate the bell sword paint job onto this figurine and to my kit bash. I think what makes the bell sword a bit unique is it's it's a black blade. I actually painted it with metallic paint and then dumbed it down with contrast paint to make it really look black metallic. And then I just added like that little blue in the hilt. Basically it's just a simple paint job with a little Genshin flare like the backpack. Instead of making it the usual red lip backpack, I put like a little orange light to make it look like she's a Geo Archon or she has Geo element as in the game. I also tried to paint the skull like a hilly churl mask. So I did like a broken mask. It's also an item in Genshin Impact. And then after I did those little details, it's up to highlighting and it's pretty much um, all complete. And the reason why I wanted to share this gift giving exercise to you guys is because this show is all about getting creative with your backlog. And when you get creative with your backlog, you're less intimidated with your backlog. You get to do more with your backlog and evidently you get to get past that creative wall or creative hurdle we normally encounter when we look at our backlog. We remove the guilt because we know we're getting past that. And if, you're, if you see yourself accumulating a lot of models and you feel bad for buying them, why not paint one up and give it as a gift as I did in this video. If you're watching this Bubs, this one's for you. Thank you for being my rock, my literal geo element, especially when it comes to me trying new things or me just getting into things that I really love. You've always supported me and you're always just rooting for the things that make me happy. So I hope this ministry makes you happy. And to the rest of you guys still watching, thank you for still staying. Do think about your backlog. Do think about how you can turn your backlog, turn your guilt into a nice gift for maybe a loved one or someone who you'd want to express something towards. Thanks for watching guys. This has been Louis of Louis Los Minis reminding you to hobby every day to get this bruise away.